Well, I would like to welcome you all to St. James Episcopal Church, all of you here today, as well as all of you joining us online. Pastor Brian is off, and today's worship service will be led by people from our congregation. Words and lyrics are included in the bulletin, and you can also follow along on screen. All who are able, please stand as we sing our gathering song. God is spirit, and those who worship must worship in spirit and in truth. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, 
that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O God, let our mouth proclaim your praise. Amen. The Holy One is in our midst. O come, let us worship. O come, be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of your countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The Holy One is in our midst. O come, let us worship. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please be seated. October brings a variety of opportunities to remember those touched by mental illness. U.S. Mental Illness Awareness Week and World Mental Health Day are observed, as well as National Day Without Stigma and National Depression Screening Day. Mental illnesses are more common than cancer, diabetes, or heart disease. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, about one in four adults and one in five children in the U.S. suffer from a diagnosable mental illness in any given year. About one in 17 adults live with a serious mental disorder. That means a significant number of people in our congregation have a family member or friend living with mental health issues or is living with those issues themselves. These include major depression, bipolar disorder, mood disorders, schizophrenia, anxiety disorders, panic disorders, post-traumatic stress disorder, personality disorders, obsessive compulsive disorder, social phobias, and others. In many places, including our faith communities, there can be stigma surrounding mental illness. Many people of faith with mental health issues first go to a spiritual leader for help, and studies show that clergy and lay leaders are often not effective in providing appropriate support and referral information. All our faith communities can be a caring congregation for persons living with a mental illness and their family and friends. We as people of faith can help to educate, welcome, support, and advocate for those among us who are touched by mental illness. Paul, writing to the Galatians, challenges those Christians to bear one another's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. We'll now light seven candles to remind us of the burdens we share in our ongoing call to support each other. We light the candle of truth that God will help us dispel ignorance and misinformation about mental health disorders.
we light the candle of healing that troubled minds and hearts, broken lives and relationships might be healed. We light the candle of understanding that the darkness of stigma, labels, exclusion, and marginalization might be dispelled for the sake of those touched by mental illness. We light the candle of hope for persons and families living with mental illness, for better treatment, for steadier recovery, for greater opportunity to work and serve. We light the candle of thankfulness for compassionate, dedicated caregivers and mental health professionals, for new scientific discoveries and better medications. We light the candle of faith to dispel doubt and despair for those who have lost hope and are discouraged. We light the candle of steadfast love to remind us of God's love and faithfulness and to remind us to share the light of love and service for those living with mental illness. Let us pray. Lord, Lord of the excluded, excluded open my eyes to those I would not prefer not to see. Open my life to those I would prefer not to know. Open my heart to those I would prefer not to love. In, In doing, doing so, open, open my awareness to where, where I exclude you. Amen. Holy God, open unto us light for our darkness, courage for our fear, hope for our despair. Loving God, open unto us wisdom for our confusion, forgiveness for our sins, love for our hate. God of peace, open unto us calm, for our turmoil, jo joy for our sorrow, strength for our weakness. Generous God, open our hearts to receive all your gifts. Amen. Amen. Let us read in unison Psalm 80, verses 7 through 14. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You cast out the nations and planted it. You prepared the ground for it. It took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shadow and the towering cedar trees by its boughs. You stretched out its tendrils to the sea and its branches to the river. Why have you broken down its wall, so that all who pass by pluck off its grapes? The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it, and the beasts of the field have grazed upon it. Turn now, O God of hosts, look down from heaven. Behold and tend this vine. Preserve what your right hand has planted. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity. One God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson is a reading of Isaiah chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? 
and now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Let us read in unison, Canticle A, a song of wisdom. Wisdom, freed from a nation of oppressors, a holy people and a blameless race, she entered the soul of a servant of the Lord, withstood dread rulers with wonders and signs. To the saints she gave the reward of their labors and led them by a marvelous way. She was their shelter by day in the blaze of stars by night. She brought them across the Red Sea. She led them through mighty waters. But their enemies she swallowed in waves and spewed them out from the depths of the abyss. And then, Lord, the righteous sang hymns to your name and praised with one voice your protecting hand. For wisdom opened the mouths of the mute and gave speech to the tongues a newborn people. Praise the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, will be forever. Amen. The Epistle. A reading of the Epistle to the Philippines, chapter 3, verses 4b through 14. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surprising value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings, by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The reading of Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, verses 33 through 46. Jesus said, Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. 
So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to, another, to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. And Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Good morning. Um, I'm Sherry Paskowitz, and I was asked to speak a little on Tending Pathways Clubhouse today. Um, first of all, what is it, uh, and what's new? And that being said, many people here are very familiar with Painting Pathways and what it's all about, and others may not be. And so for those of you who are familiar with it, I'll let you know what's new. And for those who aren't, I will tell you what it is, and I think I should start with that. Uh, a lot of people look at the name and say, oh, it's a paint store, it's an art store, uh, but that's not it. We've actually had people come in and ask for paint. Uh, why did we choose it? Well, it's a, a recovery-based program, and also I would add a resource center for people in the community with mental health concerns. And the name came about because uh, there was a contest at some point and a member came up with the idea that each of us is painting his own or her own pathway to recovery. I've been a member since 2015. Um, the clubhouse itself was begun in 2008. And I feel it's been an even, even more of a necessary resource in our community since the uh, mental health unit at Holy Family Hospital closed a few years back. I think a lot of people kind of fell through the cracks and we're, we're here to kind of fill those voids. Um, as your bulletin says, one in five children experience mental health issues, one in four adults. So I look at me, Glenn, Barb, Chris, over there, and I say uh, one in four, but I'll tell you right now, I'm, I'm the one. <laughs> um, I originally came to the clubhouse after I retired and, because I wanted to help. I wanted to uh, be involved in something I felt passionate about. The, uh, I didn't know what it was exactly myself until I was here at St. James and Mark and Sally Hunter told me about it and they said when you, um, well not when you get out of Harrisburg where I worked, but anytime you should check it out. And I didn't have time when I was working so a couple months after I retired, Sally took me down there. I want to say that the Hunters, Mark and Sally, were very instrumental in getting the place started. Um, their dedication and passion for the subject of mental health helped create it. And no, they weren't alone, but uh, there were others in the community. But Sally and Mark were very instrumental. Another former member of St. James, Jennifer Schmoltz, was our executive director for a number of years. It was through her passion and dedication that the capital campaign occurred a few years ago that resulted in our new building. Our building is at uh, thir 13th and Washington. The address is 1226 Washington. And it's just remarkable 
what the generosity of the community did uh, to create this space because we were in the former uh, Stevers Bowling Alley building and it was pretty small and as the membership grew we were st literally stepping on each other's toes. The building we have now is twice the size of the original and we have lots of space for different activities, for cooking. Um, I want to mention that on Tuesday, which is the actual World Mental Health Day, we will be having a broad fry and other foods and activities, as well as an open house. And anyone you know, is welcome to come. This will be between 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. All of the food and so forth is available by donation. There are no set prices. And uh, we want to celebrate our 15th anniversary. And also just thank the people in the community who have been so generous. Um, in, this, in the 15 years we've been around, we've helped 675 people in our community and other communities. We've had people come from Green Bay, Sheboygan, because we're kind of unique in this area. There are other clubhouses in Wisconsin, but the closest one would be Milwaukee. So there's nothing in Sheboygan there. I shouldn't say there's nothing, but there's no uh, clubhouse model per se in Sheboygan, in Green Bay, in Appleton. Um, what do we do? We, as I said, support people with mental health concerns. Um, that means peer support among the members. It's huge. Uh, you walk in those doors, and my experience and others has been that you walk in and you're immediately welcomed in. Come on in. Um, there is a daily meal, and members are encouraged to help prepare that if that's their thing. Everybody kind of finds their niche in what they want to do to help run Clubhouse as well as support their own recovery. Um, so the peer support is huge. We help people find jobs if that's what they wish. We help them navigate the insurance uh, process, help them find housing, help them find a doctor. Um, I don't know if you know this, but if you, if you suddenly wake up one day and say, gee, I, I need some help, there can be a waiting list of six to nine months to get into a mental health professional. There just aren't enough for the population. So that is why, part of why we're here, because if you don't, if you don't have a doctor to go to and you're, you're having a terrible time and you're in crisis, you have to talk to someone. So Painting Pathways is there to kind of fill that crack and help people take their next step. Um, one of the new things is that, contrary to the past, where one had to have a diagnosed mental illness to become a member, you don't need that anymore. And part of that is because of the um, kind of lapse between a need and being able to fill the need of treatment. So if you have a concern and you think, I need some help and I don't know where to turn, you come by us, you don't need that diagnosis anymore. Um, another new thing is, in the past, we were entirely funded by the generosity of the community. No, no uh, government funding. Everything came through donations and grants. This year, we have started working with the county in a, a program called CCS, a community now I forgot the acronym. Pardon? Thank you. Community Coordinated Services. I always forget that acronym. So what that means is um, human services will refer people to us and we will serve them and they will in turn reimburse us for our services to that population. So that has helped us reach to more of the community and that's kind of a separate thing that, um, and a new thing that we started because we've got our clubhouse members, but the people who are served through the community services don't necessarily stay and become members of the clubhouse. Um, we, 
we work with people with dual diagnosis. That means they have a mental health diagnosis and they have a substance disorder, a substance use disorder. Um, and that often goes hand in hand because if someone's suffering, you know, um, mentally, I mean, and they're just bogged down, they may self-medicate. Maybe they can't afford the medication that was prescribed to them, so they'll say, I'll do it myself. And then that kind of compounds things. Um, we also have helped a lot of people without housing in the last year because, as you know, that is become a, becoming a greater issue in Manitowoc and Two Rivers. We have partnered with the um, Warming Shelter, the Haven, Hope House, MCM, which is the Manitowoc Cooperative Ministries, um, so in other words, Pastor Matt Zauer, Feeding America, all of the healthcare providers, the hospitals in the area, they finally know about us. We work with Salvation Army. So a lot of what um, the past leaders of the, of the clubhouse did was get that word out there. You know, what are we, what are we about? We're here to help. And part of that, as our litany mentioned, is trying to erase that stigma because so many people, myself included, when we found out so I need something, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to tell anybody there's anything happening. I, I, I can't tell anybody because they'll think, what's wrong with you? It's a weakness, and it shouldn't be viewed that way. I think most of the people here feel the way I do, that you know, it's nothing wor or different from having a broken leg or some illness, uh, physical illness. So if you or someone you know feels that you need some help, don't be afraid because you come, you call, um, call the clubhouse and speak to one of the staff. If you, someone you know or yourself feel that I want to take that step and get some help, call the clubhouse. The number is 920-652-9952. And the best way is to call and make an appointment so that they have uh, time to actually sit down with you and discuss the program and give you the proper time to talk about that. Uh, lately, we've been emphasizing activity, not idleness. So sometimes people would come in and get their free lunch and see, a, see them tomorrow or get a half price bus pass and that's the last time we'd see them all month. And now uh, we're really pushing that, you know, you want to be here, it's totally voluntary. Nobody's, nobody can tell you, you have to come to Painting Pathways. It is voluntary. Sometimes a doctor will refer someone, but it doesn't mean they are mandated to be there. So if one chooses to be at the clubhouse, you should be, and I hate to use the word should, but it is an expectation that you are working on your recovery or that you are um, doing something to help that clubhouse keep running. And that is the best way to um, bring about your recovery rather than just uh, sit by and let somebody else try to figure it out. It can be a lot of work. Um, I was diagnosed with OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, many years ago. And I thought, well, that's the answer. Now I know what's going on with me. But there was also this, there was always a gap, like there's something else going on and I can't figure it out. And this year I got diagnosed with a couple other things. And it's like, oh, now I get it. And I have a therapist who really knows how to deal with it. I'll tell you that one of the issues is a personality disorder. And maybe I hide it very well, but it's very tough and it requires a lot of work. And I have to say, um, by the grace of God, uh, that I decided to put that work forward because in the past I thought, I don't want to start over and do, I don't know, I'm, I'm not doing this. But it's worth it. Um, God walks beside us and we just have to take his hand and uh, realize that there is hope. You know, your days won't be perfect. Every day you keep taking that step, 
yeah, I have days where I fall back and I think, oh, that was stupid. But, uh, you know, I got to remember, don't beat yourself up. God loves you and keep trying to take a step. And the clubhouse is there to support that. Um, as I mentioned, the peer support is huge. Uh, they have a meal every noon and it's not no cost. Um, the active members can get a bus pass at half price because most of us don't drive. Um, I mentioned the partnerships in the community. Also, if you just want to come on down and see what, what it's like down there and see how we work and see the beautiful facility we have, just stop on down at 1226 Washington Street. Um, I want to say that St. James has been a partner of the clubhouse since its inception, and that has just been so huge. The acceptance that St. James has for people, and that is what the clubhouse does. I mean, we maybe don't do it as well as St. James, but the idea is that anyone can come in. It's a no judgment zone. Everyone is welcome, regardless of race, uh, education, uh, income, sexual orientation, gender identity. I mentioned race. You know, anything that you can think of, it doesn't matter. And everyone come, and it's a no judgment zone, which is huge because usually people who've been struggling on their own see judgment all around them. So I think that the clubhouse has been a real um, needed thing in our community, and it's kind of unique. As I mentioned, uh, we're not rolling in the dole. So if, if anyone, I'm not pitch, making a pitch for money, but if anyone were interested to uh, support at that, you can just ma mail a check to Painting Pathways Clubhouse at 1226 Washington. I believe there's, there still may be a PayPal option on our website, which is paintingpathways.org. And we also have a Facebook page, Painting Pathways Clubhouse, Inc. So I think that's all I have to say about that. But thank you, and uh, thank, the, you know, thank all of you here who have been so supportive over the years. Well, Sherry, thank you so much for this, I think, really valuable update on Painting Pathways, some things that I didn't realize changes had been made, and uh, not everyone is as brave as Sherry to make yourself vulnerable by standing up here. So thank you, thank you for that. All are who able, please stand and join in the word of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, <coughs> Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, Christ rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Catholic <coughs> Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Inspire us to always share your love through action, O God. Strengthen us to always be an inviting, safe community for all.
offering our prayers. God be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Help us, O God, our Savior. Look upon your congregation. Declare your glory among the nations. Do not let the oppressed be shamed and turned away. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and meditation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A prayer of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Jesus, in union with the faithful of every place and people and nation, I join in offering the sacrifice of my praise and thanksgiving to you. I believe that you are truly present. Since I cannot now receive this holy sacrament, I pray that you will come spiritually into my heart. Abide with me that I may embrace you entirely and submit myself to your love and mercy. Let me never be separated from you that in my waking and in my sleeping, I may know the comfort of your presence. I ask this for the sake of your love. Amen. Amen. The prayers of the people. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for this community, the nation, and the world. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. for the entire body of Christ, near and far. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. 
We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We also lift up all on our prayer list and those we remember now. Hear our prayers, holy God. Breathe your spirit over us and all the earth that barriers would crumble and divisions cease. Make us more fully your co-healers of the broken world. Unite us with all people in bonds of love that the whole earth and all its peoples may be at peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Well, at this time, I invite anyone who has or will be celebrating a birthday or anniversary to come forward to the rail. And I'd also like to invite you to come forward if you need prayer for healing, travel, or another need. So, Barb, we're happy to have you here. And you are celebrating a birthday. And Ron and Eleanor. So let us first pray our birthday prayer, and then we'll follow that with those celebrating anniversaries. Let's start with the birthday prayer. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us also join in prayer for all those who have celebrated or will be celebrating anniversaries. O oh God, you teach us through the example of Jesus that love is the fulfillment of the law. Help those couples celebrating anniversaries to persevere in love, to grow in mutual understanding, and to deepen their trust in each other, that in wisdom, patience, and courage, their life together may be a source of happiness to all with whom they share it. Amen. And to all of you celebrating milestones, may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you to guide and protect you and all those you love today and always. Amen. I ask for healing prayers for my good friend Mandy who will be traveling with her father back to Madison Hospital in a week for another cancer scare. We love you. Bless you. Well, today is our seventh anniversary. We do have a time now where we can offer some announcements. So, Chris, looks like you have something to share. Come on up. Good morning. First, I want to thank Sherry for her wonderful talk this morning. It was very interesting and well done. So, thank you, Sherry. Also, a shout out and thanks to Steve Phillips, who closed the windows this morning to keep us a little warmer. Uh, we had a little boiler issue this morning. Hopefully we'll get that taken care of soon. Uh, the other thing I would like to remind you is there is Dine and Discuss coming up next week. Tony is going to do the con uh, congregational update this morning because I am not going to be able to stay to do that. So please pay attention and read, read all of the things in your bulletin. And if anyone has any other questions, you can contact anyone on the vestry 
and we will get back to you. So thank you. Well, I hadn't planned to be up here for an announcement, but as I looked at the calendar, Skip and I are gonna be out of town the next three Sundays, and I wanted to bring this up before the first Sunday in November, but we are again going to be participating in the Salvation Army Adopt-A-Family. Again, we're gonna take 10 individuals. Again, we're gonna uh, spend $60 on each person. These, uh, everybody knows that times are tighter, and if they're tighter for us, they're tighter for those people also. I just wanted you to be thinking about that. I just know that within the month, I'll be getting all the individuals, you know, kids, moms, dads, whatever, but I want it to be on our radar that we are going to do this. my turn to uh, give the update on behalf of the search committee. Um, Glenn, Steve, Mary, Mary and myself. After a rather frustrating round of writing, rewriting, writing again, rewriting, adding, deleting, <laughs> giving it to the uh, diocesan people to uh, tweak it again. We have finally put together a parish profile that's acceptable, has been approved by our um, vestry and by the diocesan people, and it is now, I believe it's out in the public domain, we're ready to roll. Um, so the next step then for us will be um, looking to interview candidates as those um, appear. Um, you need to be aware that um, they're not going to be flooding the gates. Not that we're not an appealing parish or anything, it's just that um, when you're looking for a part-time pastor, uh, there have to be the right kinds of perfect storm situations for someone that would find that appealing. Um, so uh, again, we're gonna ask for your patience in that regard. We have uh, already started a, a pretty extensive list of uh, questions um, in, in preparation for that. And tonight we'll be meeting again with uh, uh, Kathy Cowley, who's our, been sort of our spirit guide through all of this. Um, so she's going to prep us, I'm sure. She's been cracking the whip pretty hard, <laughs> which has been a real interesting experience. Um, and I believe um, that the vestry is also meeting with some people from the diocesan uh, organization to kind of clarify some things. So we are, I know it's been a slow process, but it's been a, a good one, a healthy one, and we've been uh, guided well by the Holy Spirit, and uh, we appreciate your patience, and we'll keep you in the loop. Thank you. Any other announcements? Coffee hour. We have coffee hour following the service. So right outside our main sanctuary doors, just keep going downstairs. Follow the noise and the smell of coffee, and you'll find nice treats waiting for you. And before we have coffee hour, however, we are having a brief congregational chat that usually takes less than 10 minutes, and so we'd invite you to just stay right here if you'd like to hear a little bit more about um, what St. James is doing and uh, some of our um, current priorities, and that happens right after the service. And I think that's everything that we have. And it did occur to me as I've been aging um, that kneeling is a form of penance, isn't it? Yes, okay. <laughs> I'd like to read from a prayer of St. Chrysostom. God be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through the Lord that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, 
our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us join in prayer for our time of transition. Assist us, Lord, in living hopefully into the future. In the face of change, help us to set unnecessary fears aside and to recognize our potential for creative response. Help us to develop a reasonable optimism when confronted by the new and to guard us against our own defensiveness. Be with us as we remember and celebrate former times and keep us from unreasonable yearning for them, which takes us from the work you have set before us in our time. All this we ask in the name of your child, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you.